Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everyone, uh, welcome to the next module of advanced aquaculture technology. So in this module, uh, we will be learning about the technology of closed aquaculture systems and in this first lecture, I will be discussing about the transformation of open culture to closed high tech aquaculture technologies. The concepts that will be covered in this particular lecture will be the types of aquaculture systems, open aquaculture systems, the demerits of OAS the closed aquaculture systems and the key elements of this CSS, CSS how this, clo uh, this closed aquaculture systems can mitigate the inadequacies of the open aquaculture systems. So to start with, we know the different uh, various types of aquaculture uh, depending upon the hydrobiological features, depending upon the motive of farming and the depending upon the social operational technique that we will incorporate. Okay? So, uh, when we talk about the in general, the, the various culture practices are there all over the world which we normally uh, follow and which we normally consider as the various types of aquaculture uh, systems in, and generally is as follows like first of all the mariculture. The mariculture it involves any kind of aquaculture practices which uh, involve with the sea water. Okay? So it can be mostly in the sea basin it can be done. It can be done on the open sea, it can be done on the, uh, the bank of the sea where we will be doing like you know, uh, we will be um, uh, making a, we will be uh, digging a proper canal and we will take the sea water through it and so that that water can be utilized for the uh, say like this uh, tight fed uh, farms and all. It can be of uh, flow, flow through or the raceway cultures. So in recent days, these technologies are evolving uh, like anything and especially this raceways and all, I will be discussing in details in later lecture how the raceway technologies is actually revolutionizing these aquaculture practices all over the world. The third is the alga culture, mainly uh, in the alga culture mainly we talk about the seaweeds and all. So there are other uh, uh, aquatic uh, um, plants as well, but the seaweeds are the one the most uh, talk about, and we normally try to grow all over the world. Especially, it is a it is considered for their its high nutrient, which is um, very much uh, utilizable for the pharmaceutical and as well as the personal care products. And not only that, uh, the this uh, seaweeds are very much uh, famous in the south, uh, like eastern part of the Asia, especially in Japan uh, and all, and if even if in even in the European region, even if, if you go for the more western uh, US and all, there also people uh, prefer seaweeds and even in India also people started uh, you know favoring seaweeds and all uh, as a human consumption. So which uh, is used to make the sushi and all you know it, uh, this Japanese dish and all. The, there are uh, types like integrated multi-tropic aquaculture. What does that mean? It means the multi-tropic. From the name itself we can say it is not like you know concising on a particular tropics of a uh, food hierarchy rather or the food chain we can go for the multi tropic culture okay so in case of multi tropic cultures they we can go like you know there are various type of examples we can give the rice and fish uh, culture the integrated rice fish duck aqua, duck uh, duck culture the integrated poultry and uh, uh, rice culture uh, poultry and uh, fish culture so there are uh, just to name a few so this type of culture procedures we normally consider under the integrated multi-tropic aquaculture. Inland pond culture which is very famous for like thousands of years from the, from the beginning of the human civilizations. We nowadays it, uh, the, um, we started incorporating very uh, high tech ar aerator systems, very high tech uh, ar intensive aquaculture techniques. So to improve the cultural uh, benefits or cultural yield out of it. 
recirculating system. The recirculating aquaculture system is one of the uh, recent technology, recent uh, days technology which we try to incorporate to you know get rid of the uh, the, the water the 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 loss uh, incorporated because of the change of fresh water very frequently. So what we can do, we can go ahead with the treatment of the aquaculture wastewater, and then we get it back to the pond itself or the tank itself. So, this is called the recirculatory aquaculture systems by which we can reduce the consumption of the overall water from the like overall water demand. Then there comes the open net pane or the cage systems. So, this open net pane and the cage system they can be done in the uh, say like uh, any kind of surface water bodies it can be done in the river systems, it can be done in the sea water including I mean like the in the ocean uh, ocean bodies open open sea or maybe the or in I mean like the offshore areas even we can do it the paint cultures can be done in the by the side of the in the bank areas as well. So, I mean like uh, in general these are only a uh, to name a few different kind of practices different kind of like types of aquaculture that we normally uh, have in uh, uh, normally we uh, in incorporate in the aquaculture topic in general. There are open aquaculture systems or OAS in uh, short. So, this actually involves the rearing of aquatic organisms within an enclosed systems in, but in natural environment ok. Say like in freshwater rivers, coastal marine regions, brackish estuaries etcetera etcetera. So, what we normally do we try to develop a proper uh, say cage or pen culture or say like rope even stick is also involved. So, this kind of structures we invo involve we uh, uh, involve and we uh, what we do we try to use it in the natural ecosystem natural environment and try to grow our target aquatic organisms. It can be of active feeding type, it can be of passive feeding type, acting feeding type, active feeding type are the one which is like the sea cage normally where we utilize the floating mesh based cages uh, which actually anchor to the sea floor. So, when we anchor this kind of sea uh, cages and all this, uh, this, uh, this cage cultures and all which we normally use sea bream, sea bash, um, the cod fish tilapia, salmon, shark, catfish, etcetera. So, this kind of fish, this kind of um, uh, this aquatic, or, uh, aquatic uh, animals, aquatic uh, this um, uh, aquaculture species can be cultured in this kind of open aquaculture systems. However, the main difference is like main uh, thing is like here in this kind of culture with this kind of targeting targeted aquatic species, we need to rely on the fish meal diet we need to provide them with the fish meal uh, uh, like additionally ok. So, that is the that is the thing no though no matter it is actually cultured in the natural ecosystem, but still we have it is actually um, completely like not completely or uh, semi completely rely on the uh, the active feeding or the feeding uh, the, uh, the feed that you are supplying to the system. Second type is, is the passive feeding or the stick racks ropes or cages that you can provide and in this kind of um, arrangements what happen the, uh, the mussels and the oysters what they will do or even like uh, the seaweeds and all what they will do they will just grow over its surface and they or what will happen they are mainly the filter feeders what they do they completely take the way the water of the surrounding places and they filter it through their uh, through uh, specific uh, uh, like uh, system that they have in their body. And because of that what will happen whatever the planktonic uh, organisms that is present in the water whatever the amount of water they in intake. So, they can easily feed uh, filter it out and they can utilize it as a diet. So, for this kind of uh, aquatic species we do not have to rely on the additional fish meal diets. You can see in this picture the first one if you see the sea cage based uh, open aquaculture systems where you see the, the cage uh, is actually moved to the uh, uh, ocean floor and the fish meal is provided artificially you can see the number 2. So, it is provided artificially which is added to the cages um, and the this buoyant tubes are there to you know keep the cage afloat or we sometimes call it floating tubes as well floaters as well. And the fish you can see the amount of loss uh, it can uh, cause the feet the all the fish feces and also the waste or the uneaten uh, feeds actually what happen they will directly fall through the cages because it is it is part for it is there is like it is a mess kind of stru structure there is no solid floor. So, because of that there is a huge amount of loss of uneaten uh, feed or the the excreta the, the the fish excreta that is actually being there which can cause local uh, environmental impact as well okay 
So we'll discuss about it in details. What are the cons part of it? What is the disadvantages of uh, this cage based OS? And you can see in the second figure like the where stick racks, ropes or the cages are used uh, where the oysters and mussels can grow uh, on its surface, on its body and see the nutrients are taken from the water uh, by the, the organism itself and the passive systems of this, this kind of systems can occur can be uh, utilized in the uh, estuary region as well as in the open sea region. What are the demerits of this open aquaculture systems? First of all, there are uh, the, the open alcohol system that the demerits means whatever I'm, I want to discuss is the one which are uh, normally used conventionally, but nowadays because of the scientific advancement, we kind of get rid of all these problems and we try to find out the additional solutions out of it. I will be discussing all, the, all these things in uh, later uh, lectures like what are the advancement in the OS systems even which can also uh, reduce the demerits, uh, these demerits that I will be discussing right now. So first of all, uh, in case of OS, uh, the first is active feeding one. We require to, uh, we need to pr provide them with the fish meal uh, for feeding the carnivorous species. Uh, we need to provide it uh, the, uh, the normal meal also, like in case of uh, other species. The poor conversion ratio. Sometimes even five kg of fish meal is required to breed only one kg of fish because of the loss of huge amount of loss that incurs with this kind of structures, with this kind of uh, infrastructures. High fish density uh, results in the increased amount of disease and the parasite transmission uh, because of uh, we are utilizing it in a normal environment to increase the yield we may sometimes normally go for the intensive aquaculture practices in this kind of uh, OASs and all. There is a risk of escape if by any uh, natural calamity or by say like any predators and all somehow if this, uh, this came the netting material the mesh is somehow get like a tear apart or it gets broken. What will happen? There is a chance of loss of huge quantity of economic loss can be happen. You know, there is a whole fish uh, school of fish can escape through it, and because of that, you can mm, it can uh, cost us a lot of uh, economic uh, loss or economic uh, disadvantages. So, another unwanted thing is like interbreeding with the wild populations. Because sometimes these meshes are all you know from the upper part of it, it is open. So, sometimes they because of the plashing of water or like wave or the, the oceanic waves or the, uh, the river waves, it will there is a chance the it can uh, 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 you know in con contact with the wild population. And once it is in co contact with the, with the wild population, it can interbreed with them and this, this interbreed can cause harm to the system as well. There are a lot of, uh, lot of uh, case studies happen where this interbreeding actually cause the huge uh, harm to the local ecosystems and uh, well, uh, th therefore we do not uh, expect it to be happen in our uh, farm. Accumulation of the fecal waste which reduces the water quality as I discussed it you can see in the picture only the all the uh, feed that we are uh, supplying it is not being completely eaten by the fish because it cannot. So, some of them get as well as this fecal waste, fecal waste is like the fish excreta or the whatever aquatic species you are targeting, the excreta of that particular uh, excreta or the excretionary, excretory products of that particular species that also can has a huge amount of nitrogen in it which can cause the water quality to deteriorate, is not it. So, these are the problems other, other than that disposal of sticks and racks also can be a concern matter of concern in some areas which are a normal practice in case of open uh, aquaculture systems for uh, growing the mussels and the oysters. So, let us discuss about the closed aquaculture system. So, we know what is open aquaculture systems, we also like know we had an idea about what is closed aquaculture system. simply it is nothing but the which involves the land based, uh, land -based uh, breeding of the aquatic organisms in pond, raceways and tanks. It maintains the control interface between the reared species and the natural environment. So, once we can maintain this uh, controlled interface between these two uh, feature, what will happen? We can easily optimize the benefits, uh, we can easily um, reduce the environmental impact, we can easily uh, increase the yield. So, all together this is a win-win situation for us. So, this in general we implement the highly sophisticated waste management procedures which can filter the generated waste water and cyclic, uh, cycle it back to the aquaculture system itself. Recirculatory aquaculture system is a typical example of this closed aquaculture system. Uh, Atlantic salmon, cobia, catfish, tilapia and European bass are some of the example of the aquatic species which are normally reared in the CSS uh, like uh, the closed aquaculture systems. 
here in this picture I have shown you the what is semi closed aquaculture system and what is closed aquaculture systems. In case of semi closed aquaculture system you see the inlet uh, for the uh, inlet uh, the, the you can see the red pipe which is actually used with this conduit line is actually used to take the water from the sea or the ocean water then it is pumped to the system and that that water that water is utilized in the uh, the prawns are actually normally cultivated using these methods and this semi closed aquaculture systems the, the best example of semi closed aquaculture system is tight fed farm or even the pump fed farm. We call it pump fed farm because uh, like pump fed uh, brackish water farm or pump fed sea water farm. So, because this kind of culture species it needs certain amount of salinity. We know that sea water has like around 30 to 35 ppt of salinity in case of uh, brackish water it it can be like as low as uh, 1 to 2 ppt as the highest say like 10 ppt of uh, salinity. So, that salinity has to be maintained ok and this kind of aquatic species can only be sustained in this kind of uh, when the uh, the target the culture uh, the medium has this much of salinity. So, in order to grow them in order to culture this kind of species we normally go for uh, semi closed aquaculture systems and the closed aquaculture system is you, will, you all know like it is like a simply a closed uh, uh, place where we are uh, supplying the additional uh, feed and all and we try to grow the uh, aquatic species out of it. Recirculated aquaculture system it is a famous uh, example of this uh, closed aquaculture systems where we try to grow uh, intensive in intensive nature the huge amount uh, large amount of aquatic species in a small enclosed space and we try to treat the water uh, using different methods I will be discussing in soon what are the methods that we normally use. So, by treating it then we uh, I let just after the treatment is done we just let the water come back to the pond itself uh, come back to the tank or as or the pond itself. So, this is called the recirculatory aquaculture system. What are the key elements of uh, CAS? What are the key elements of uh, closed aquaculture systems? First of all we can monitor it we can monitor uh, the fish health, we can monitor the uh, water quality, we can monitor the uh, the amount uh, the feed requirement, we can monitor the uh, the environment of the surrounding uh, 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 temperature I mean like the even the air temperature of the air also does matter. So, all these things can be monitored because of its uh, because it is in a anyway it is in the controlled uh, atmosphere, it is in the controlled uh, uh, greenhouse, it is in the control. Uh, say like concrete house or, or even it if, if, it, if it is in the open uh, open air, but still it can be controlled and we can put a roof on it and we can control the uh, the environmental uh, of environment of the, uh, the surrounding vicinity and we can also control the whole the water the pond water or the tank water or the raceway water in this kind of systems. Fish handling is very easy because the catch is very easy you can just go for it and just have a have a, have a sm uh, small uh, net and you can easily catch catch it. You don't have to worry about catching fish because of its high. It can be uh, larger in size. The pond or the tank can be larger and huge amount, huge size in uh, in nature. But still, it is doable. The catch catching of fish is much easier, and you can collect the. You can uh, time to time you can collect them and you can check their uh, if they detect the diseases if they uh, it occurs. You can detect the the growth rate and you can have a proper understanding about the. Uh, your target aquatic species in general. Feeding habits completely artificial diet uh, it will depend in general. So, you have you can go for fish meal, you can go for fertilizer, you can go for the other uh, uh, diet as well other like feeding uh, um, arrangements as well. The filtration unit in general we try to get rid of all the sol uh, all the suspended solid from the systems and then we go for biofilter to treat the uh, the nitrogen species and try to um, get rid of all the nitrogen species possible from the system. Temperature control, uh, water heating system it requires I remember I told you about I think in previous to previous lecture where we were discussing about the geothermal energy. We use the geothermal energy in general or if we cannot if we cannot if we cannot have the access to the geothermal energy what we can do we can simply use a, a temperature controlled uh, temperature controlled atmosphere or temperature controlled greenhouse. So, that uh, that temperature will can be controlled uh, inside your systems because what happen uh, even in uh, the forget about the temperate region there we definitely have to have a water heating systems even in uh, region like us like even uh, the in India also if you go to the northern part of India go to the northern part of West Bengal itself in this regions. So, 
what happens the temperature is very uh, like in case of in the winter the temperature goes down drastically. So, in order to culture a particular type of culture species year long what you need to do you need to maintain the temperature for them to survive in that system. So, that is why we need to go for the controlling of temperature and controlling of proper environment for your cultural species. So, that is why you need to provide the water heating system that is kind of disadvantage of this type of systems, but just, ima just imagine what will happen in case of open aquaculture systems. In case of open aquaculture system you just cannot uh, like uh, culture it at all. In case of close aquaculture system you can at least culture them, you can at least culture them providing some additional means of support, okay. but in case of open aquaculture system the nature, nature is in so super harsh in case of in the winter season uh, because of especially in terms of temperature and if you go to the temperate or further uh, above in the northern part or say below in the southern uh, atmosphere what will happen they it is it is really not possible for them to grow any kind of uh, species there any kind of because of the temperature unless and uh, unless uh, there are some certain species which are actually available which are actually can sustain this cyclophilic temperature but normally they are not aeration unit. So, you need to provide aeration unit that is actually one of the nuisance for this kind of structure this kind of technology that you need to provide aeration uh, you need to provide the artificial uh, you need to provide the dissolved oxygen artificially for your culture species to grow otherwise uh, and also you have to maintain that dissolved oxygen uh, all the way around all the way along. Ozone and ultraviolet sterilization it reduces the bacterial and the organic load sometimes we uh, incorporate in a uh, recirculated aquaculture system this kind of ozone or ultraviolet sterilization which um, before putting that water back to the system. So, that we can get rid of all the pathogenic microorganisms from the system even if it is grow if it grows we can easily get rid of it by uh, utilizing this ozone or uh, this kind of tertiary treatment units. So, what makes this CAS better than OAS like this closed aquaculture system better than the open aquaculture systems. I think with whatever I have discussed till now you will have a better idea about what exactly it means and how why I um, mean by this particular slide that why like CAS is somehow better than the conventional OASs that is available uh, in existing models that is available. In general it maintains the water quality due to the negligible interference uh, with the natural waterways you can have a sophisticated waste management procedures, you can prevent the fish escape uh, through uh, to the surrounding water which is one of the um, major issues which we normally um, kind of face in when we go for the open aquaculture system. Reduce the transmission of fishes diseases and the parasites because as I mentioned like we use different techniques structural treatment techniques to reduce the uh, the microbial load of the water or the waste water. So, when we try to reduce the microbial load of the uh, unwanted especially the uh, pollu like the one we call it patho uh, the pathogens when we try to do uh, try to reduce the amount of pathogens or the if any unwanted microorganism in your system we try to reduce the load by using the additional means we use uh, the different tertiary treatment methods like uh, we can go for ozonation we can go for UV treatment we can go for uh, activated carbon filters and also like this is just I am giving some examples what uh, which normally use. We can go for uh, uh, advanced oxidation processes where in we can go for um, we can use the catalyst different photo catalyst along with the UV. So, it will further increase the uh, this um, reduction in the microbial load process from the process. So, these are different technologies which are already available and which requires a very less amount of energy with the advanced technology that is already there in the market and it can reduce the possibility of transmission of diseases and parasites. See there may be some additional cost involved with the application of this additional technologies. However, just remember once your uh, culture species get the disease or somehow it is some uh, it get the uh, infected with the disease in a very short period of time you will l l lose a huge it will have a very huge economic impact in your farm. That is why we need to we need to go for this kind of treatment system so that it will improve there will be a continuity there will be a like at least you will be uh, you will have a better uh, control to your system to reduce the any possible disease outbreak in your farm. It improves the fish quality and the superior growth rate because your each and everything is well controlled well optimized uh, and, and, and it is done in the scientific way. 
if it is done in scientific way definitely it can improve the fish quality and it can improve the growth rate like anything better food conversion ratio because your the amount of fish feed that you are supplying the amount of uh, the uneaten or uneaten fish feed we can reduce it by providing us pro do the proper dis calculation and we can go for exact amount of uh, we can produce the feed which is having exact amount of nitrogen or phosphorus that is needed for the fish to grow we don't go for additional uh, amount of nitrogen we don't have to go for additional amount of feed so that the amount of because in open sea what happened there is a flow of water and also most of the fish is getting uh, most of the feed is getting uneaten but in case of closed aquaculture systems even if uh, some amount of uh, feed get uneaten at the initial stage of uh, um, em employment but afterwards uh, the fish will come and when it will be hungry it will come and have that food like i'm just giving you uh, the a scenario so by this way the food conversion efficiency can be improved it reduce the dependency on the therapeutics and different kind of antibiotics and all whenever this kind of uh, open um, aquaculture systems uh, they um, kind of how to say they, um, the sorry closed aquaculture systems can reduce the need for these all the systems because it can reduce the uh, possibility of disease outbreak and all and when there is a decrement or the uh, like uh, when you can reduce the uh, possibility of disease outbreak and all so definitely you can uh, help you out with the uh, it can give you a better uh, uh, average better advantage than the open aquaculture systems so to conclude it uh, the open aquaculture system has been like most preferred aquaculture systems over the years but however it possesses it possesses high environmental risk at, as we discussed due to its direct contact with the natural waterways does the focus has now shifted towards the closed aquaculture systems mostly however uh, i'm telling you uh, there are recent studies there are recent researches going on even on open aquaculture system also to make it more viable to make it more uh, environmentally benign so that it will not uh, uh, cause uh, this much environmental risk or it will uh, still it can give uh, the proper uh, the benefit that we are looking for okay the uh, closed aquaculture systems it involve highly sophisticated waste management systems for solid waste removal biological filtration thereby it can improve the water quality and making the water reusable several times before being discarded so it can uh, reduce the water consumptions like anything but see still i cannot compare in this particular uh, matter with the open aquaculture systems because open aquaculture system we are not utilizing the water at all isn't it but in terms of uh, waste management it is much better the cas is much better than the uh, open aquaculture systems and all okay so all together there are pros and cons for both of the systems but uh, you need to understand now the science has advanced enough and cas not only uh, closed aquaculture systems but even open aquaculture systems are also coming uh, forward with a huge uh, possibility of getting huge amount of economic return with a high production yield uh, and closed aquaculture system definitely it um, uh, goes uh, a long way uh, now uh, in terms of scientific uh, output and all so these are the references that i have used uh, you can um, take a look on this so that you will have a better idea about uh, the, the 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 discussions that we have uh, thank you so much uh, see you on the next lecture